Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Connors again, and in this series we're going to start talking about understanding genetic testing and our what are called SNP defects. SNP stands for single nucleotide polymorphism. That's a defect in a specific gene, and uh, there's a lot of them out there that we are going to talk about. So this is going to be a general overview, and we're going to use the um, MTHFR gene as an example in this overview because that's probably the most common one people are getting tested today and believe me we're getting calls on a daily basis of people saying hey i just found out i have an mthfr defect and i need to know what supplements to take so we're going to hit that hard and heavy today so if this is you you just got a test or you're thinking of getting a test or your friend got a test and you're thinking about doing this too uh, there's some things that you want to know. So hopefully we'll clear that up a little bit. So some general rules with genetic testing. Here's my general rules. Should everybody get a genetic test? Well, yes and no. It can be helpful. It can be harmful. So when you understand what we're going to talk about with the general rules of genetic testing and how to treat them, then it can be helpful. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, or you're going to a uh, doctor who is going to treat the genetic SNP defect, then it can be very harmful. So our first rule in genetic testing is that you never treat the SNP defect. So you don't do a test and find out, oh, I have an MTHFR defect, so I'm going to treat that defect. So I'm going to start taking this or that or whatever supplement because this is what treats that SNP defect. That is so wrong. I cannot overemphasize how wrong that is. You can really hurt yourself that way. A SNP defect, these, these genetic defects, a person can live to be 120 years old with 20 genetic defects that never end up causing issues. The genetic defect will typically only cause issues if there's other environmental factors going on. So just because I have an MTHFR defect doesn't mean I'm going to be under methylating. It does not mean that. So you have a MTHFR defect, plus you have Lyme disease, plus you have H. pylori, plus you have, you know, heavy metal toxicity. Now you start having issues. And that defect, whatever the defect we're talking about, can complicate the problem, but it isn't the problem itself. So in our office, we do not treat SNP defects. No doctor should be treating SNP defects. You should not be treating SNP defects. You have to treat the underlying cause, or you're going to be a deep, dark doo-doo. I'm just telling you that right now. So if we have a patient that calls us and says, hey, my son just got tested. He's got an MTHFR defect. Um, what should we take? Uh, nothing. You don't treat the defect. You treat the person. we got to find out what else is going on with this person um, that he's having symptoms. Guarantee you his symptoms are not solely because he has a genetic SNP defect. The genetic SNP defect, again, may complicate the problem. Um, so give you an example. Two people, next door neighbors, both of them got Lyme disease. One recovers fine, doesn't have any issues. The other one, it destroys her life, and she's bedridden. And so we do a genetic test on both of them. The one that destroyed their life, they could have a whole bunch of different SNP defect and got Lyme, and then it complicated the whole issue, and it, and it hindered her recovery from Lyme disease. Uh, the other one might not have any SNP defects or less SNP defects, and they recovered just fine from the Lyme disease. So SNP defects can complicate other environmental factors that are causing disease. You don't treat the SNP defect. You have to kill, in this case, the Lyme disease. You have to take care of that. You don't treat the SNP defect. So very important. I know I'm hammering that hard, but it needs to be hammered hard because people are misunderstanding genetic testing and their doctors are misusing it too. Um, it really bothers me when doctors are using it to sell supplements. That is just, just downright unethical. So never treat the SNP defect. Look 
at the whole person. You gotta dig to find the cause. You have to be a right brain doctor. That's what I tell doctors when I teach doctors. You gotta be a right brain doctor. You know, most doctors are very left brain analytical. <coughs> Follow this line. Look it up in Merck Manual. Here's what the research says. <coughs> it doesn't work that way. You have to be able to step back at 10,000 feet and look at the big picture and see how we're going to treat this person um, and look at all the things that are going on. If you're a doctor and you're only doing genetic testing and then you're developing a treatment protocol on that, you are, you're messed up. So you, you've got to look at the big picture. You've got to run a bunch of other tests. You've got to find out what the root cause of the problem is for the person be able to help them. All right. Then... Once you do that, once you do find the cause, once you are treating the whole person, then it's not even a matter of treating the SNP then. You've got to look upstream and downstream, and thanks to uh, Dr. Ben Lynch, who's a wonderful guy who put together this pathway planner and put the whole metabolic pathways on a nice big giant picture, uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of upstream and downstream effects of every single little gene defect that can occur. It affects a whole bunch of stuff. So when I give a substrate or when I treat that SNP and give that, oh, I got an MTHFR defect, so I'm going to take a whole bunch of methyl tetrahydrofolate, uh, boy, that can affect everything else. So you can't do that. So you've got to be very, very careful. You cannot use protocols. So... It is at least once a week that we get calls from other doctors that say, what, my, I have a patient that came in with Lyme disease. What's your protocol? I have a patient that came in with this defect. What's your protocol? Uh, I don't have a protocol. So again, I said it before, if you're a doctor that's searching for protocols, you're, you're functioning in a left brain. You got to get back in your right brain and go, there isn't a protocol. This is a person, not a protocol. We got to find out what's going on with this person and treat them individually. Never use protocols. Everyone is different. And even after that, you're constantly tweaking, tweaking, tweaking their program. Patients sometimes get frustrated because they're educated in a standard medical approach where I go in, I have this problem, I get diagnosed, I get a label, it's slapped on me, I give it a drug, and my problems are solved. Well, hello, there's a reason why the United States ranks like 63rd among uh, all countries as far as health go, because that's the way we're treating disease, and um, it just doesn't work. So you have got to look at things differently. You've got to treat the whole person, and their body is dynamic, and it's constantly changing. Even looking at these pathways, they're constantly flowing and changing. You can't give a supplement and think that they're going to be on that supplement at that dosage for the rest of their life. That's just absolutely ridiculous. So you've got to treat them dynamically as well. So all that soapbox being said, all those rules being said, this is what a test can look like. Now, this is one test that we do in our office. This is a genetic test uh, for um, a bunch of different genes that are very important. There's thousands of genes that you could test for, but these are many that are functional, that have functional basis based upon um, issues that they may cause. So this is what a test would look like. This is from doctor's data. The ones in the green are normal. The ones in the pink are abnormal. And this would be a pretty representation of the kind of patients that walk in our office because we tend to see the sickest of the sick in our office. So when we're looking at those pictures, we're looking at what defects this person has. And we're talking about MTHFR. That would be these, uh, this array right here. Now, when we look at MTHFR issues, that is this pathway on the left-hand side. MTHFR is what I circled down there on the bottom. MTHFR redu uh, reductase is that gene that takes that starts at the top of this pathway where folate is. So you take folate in your body. It's reduced to methyl tetrahydrofolate where it could go into other pathways. So it feeds the methionine pathway that makes SAMe, which basically controls your energy function for just about every cell in your body. Uh, it feeds the uh, transsulfuration pathway, where it goes down through the CBS pathway, and controls glutathione production. Uh, it 
goes the other way into the biopterin pathway where it controls the function and production and elimination of all your neurotransmitters and your hormones. So this is what feeds everything here. So defects anywhere along the way can be a complication of other things going on. So we need to deal with it. So some rules when we're talking about methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase defect would be make sure you're not consuming folic acid. So there's multiple um, nutritional products that are still on the market. Matter of fact, you'd probably be hard-pressed to find a prenatal vitamin in any store that doesn't have folic acid in it. Well, folic acid is a uh, synthetic folate. It's not real folate. So folic acid is one of the things that can possibly cause a methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase defect in itself. So make sure you're not consuming any folic acid. But Folate breaks down all these pathways down through these arrows here that I show to all these different substrates, all these things you can have genetic defects of also to create methyl tetrahydrofolate to feed methionine, to feed transsulfuration, to feed the biopterin cycle. And it's all a dynamic pathway that's going around. This is the, the methionine cycle right here. We're all your energy is, part of your energy is made, your SAM-E is made, which is essential for uh, hundreds, if not thousands of different pathways in your body. Very important that we don't have blockages through all of that. This, what I circled in the black here, is your uh, transsulfuration pathway, which creates all your glutathione, your hydrogen sulfate, feeds into your, your uh, um, Krebs cycle, uh, all these different things can have issues too. So it's not just about one defect here. This here is your biopterin pathway that, that creates and gets rid of all your neurotransmitters. This is so anybody has ADD, ADHD, anxiety, OCD issues, uh, sleep issues, all feed from the same pathway. So it gets very, very complicated. So you can see why you don't just treat the defect. So rule number one is you don't treat the defect. Rule number two is make sure that you're not consuming any folic acid because it's producing unmetabolized folic acid, which blocks this whole pathway and can block all your problems. You have to check for other causes. Check for, I should say, the causes because genetic defects aren't going to be the cause. They're going to be a complication. So you must look at for the causes of your symptoms. What are the underlying things going on? Does this person have a heavy mental toxicity or some other toxicity? Is there leaky gut issues going on? Do they have Lyme disease? Do they have candida? Do they have H. pylori? Do they have other autoimmune conditions? You have to uncover those things. So Make sure that you're going to a doctor, if you're a patient listening to this, that is digging to the bottom of this and uncovering these things. Then and only then can you support the pathway. Still, you're not treating the SNPs, but you're supporting the pathway. So very important. I know this is just an overview here, but it is really important because this is really how you got to look at everything. It's very complicated, and um, you got to dig into each one of these things. And what is blocking this pathway other than a defect? Does this person have any other disorder going on? So uh, hopefully this didn't just mess up your brain. You might have to listen to it a couple times. But it is very complicated, but very simple also. Just go back to the cause. Let's dig to find the cause. Let's figure this out and get you on the path to correction. And it is a path. So uh, just stay with me there. Contact our office if you have any questions. I hope this was a help to you.